Good morning, everybody that watches my videos and uh, subscribed or you're just finding it on YouTube. Before we get started, I just want to say check out my channel, like my videos, and uh, subscribe to, to my channel. And uh, go on my channel, check out some of the videos I have on there, some pretty cool stuff. And some really cool stuff will be coming up tomorrow, which will be Friday, September 11th, I think. Either Friday or Saturday, I'm going to be going to the Good Guys Car Show in Loveland, Colorado at the Budweiser Event Center. Um, huge event, hundreds of cars, all sorts of custom, you know, classics, hot rods, that type of thing. That's the main thing that's there. Great show. There should be some good autocross there too. So we'll go see. I think that's happening Saturday. I'll have to decide which day I want to go to capture all that. But some really cool events happen up there. And I'll be uh, filming that all for you guys to watch on my channel. This is going to be a vlog slash informational video. Um, I'm going to tell you what happened uh, this past weekend, Labor Day weekend. So basically I went up to Vail, Colorado, over for Sunday into Monday. Tried to get back home Monday during the day, about 11 o'clock. Eisenhower Tunnel, the pass going up, to, sorry I just had to adjust my mic, going up to the tunnel. It was like a four hour delay between Silverthorne and the top of the tunnel. People were stopped, literally stopped. So I had to turn around, me and my family, we went, I was driving my car, my G8, my baby. <laughs> I had to turn around, we had to turn around, I backed down I-70 along the side of the shoulder, which was probably not the smartest thing, but I wasn't too far away from an exit, so I just backed down, we, we turned around, we ended up going up towards Kremlin, Colorado, and through Estes Park and down to Longmont, which is where I live. Now, what's funny is about 10 miles outside of Kremlin, they tore up the whole highway, okay, like both lanes, everything. It's a major highway, 65 mile an hour speed limit, the whole deal. And it was a pure muddy mess. I mean, it was mud everywhere. And I don't know what type of mud, airplane going over, I don't know what type of mud it was. Whatever it was, it really messed my paint up, like bad. And G8s tend to have really sensitive paint, if that makes any sense, um, like to that type of contaminants. I even had waxed it beforehand before I went to Nebraska uh, with Adam's buttery wax and I waxed the whole thing I think that's what protected it but I've been I spent all day yesterday polishing it with the first step um, just to get it to shine like that to get the shine back now that was the first step and I know there's some dirty spots still like my tires need to be worked on still uh, wheel wells but we're getting there um, I should have videotaped it before it was it was actually flat it, it was not good after I washed it twice so uh, I've been dealing with that <laughs> that wasn't fun at all because just you know it's like why would they do that and whatever was the mud was made of it was not good so uh, yeah so anyway wanted to kind of explain that so I'm gonna be working on that today uh, gonna be sealing it up and stuff as well as I had some comments on one of my last videos I think about a guy that bought a G8 he I think he, he hit a pothole pretty bad blew a strut out actually on his G8 it had like 8,000 miles on it and now he has a slight vibration in the steering wheel now I told him he might have a bent wheel or he could have had a slip belt in his tire from hitting the pothole so hard but also I wanted to explain G8s are very sensitive when it comes to you know road conditions and stuff I even have a slight vibration at about 65 miles an hour on certain roads now I explain that there's one road where it really does it and then there's other roads where it doesn't do it at all at the same speed and it just happens to be I think this is what my my diagnosis of it is is even if they're balanced they're your wheels and tires these have been road force balanced on my car I even still have a slight vibration the rack and pinion steering setup on these cars is is hard mounted, meaning there's no rubber bushings to isolate it, as well as the steering shaft. There's not a whole lot of flexibility there. So if one wheel is vibrating up and down, on uh, like a rough surface on the road or like one of those grooved highways or whatever, it's going to translate through that whole system into the steering wheel. Now, if, if your whole car is shaking, then I would definitely have it checked out. But if it's just the, the, the faintest vibration in your steering wheel, which is what I have, at 65 miles an hour goes away up past that I'm not worried about it because this is a sports car sports sedan whatever you want to call it they're designed to have more road feel 
okay so I don't worry about too much and that's just you know that's just the nature of the beast I also recommend if you have a G8 and you have the stock Bridgestone tires that are on it um, if you can spare the cash I would recommend and go get yourself a different set of tires um, I have these Michelin Sport Pilot Sport AS3s they're fantastic they have more, more grip than the stock Bridgestones um, they do well in the snow. I had three sets of Bridgestones on this car, and every single one of those sets was replaced under warranty by Bridgestone until they wouldn't replace them anymore because they probably thought I was doing something. But they had cracked. My old Bridgestones had cracked along the sidewall and inside the tread blocks. So, I don't know. They did it up to three times, and this the next time I'm like, whatever. I'm getting some nice tires, and these have been great. And... I think also another thing too that could be contributing to the slight vibration is I've heard on the forms, the G8 forms, that your brake rotors can become slightly warped. And mine kind of sound like that. I have to do a dial indicator sometime to do the rotor run out. But when I spin it around, you can kind of hear it come in contact with the pads and then leave. Like, tss, tss, like that. I think that could also be contributing to the rough feel I get in the steering wheel sometimes. Not under braking, but just going down the road because that rotor is traveling in between that caliper and that's connected to your steering. And I think that could also be doing it. So if you have a G8 and you have that vibration, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's not the end of the world. There's much worse things you could have going on than just that. But if it's a vibration that's shaking your whole car, definitely have it looked at because um, there's definitely something wrong. So yeah, that's kind of my take on that whole situation. Um, I will be doing like an o I will be doing like an owner's overview of the car, the problems I've had, problems I see other people having, um, what to look out for if you're going to buy a G8, uh, you know that that type of thing. Because it's you know these are really nice cars for the money, you know mid twenty thousand dollar range you can get yourself into one of these, and they're fantastic cars. Now if you want more performance, um, you know that type of thing. If you can find a GXP of low miles on it, I would go for one of those. If you can spare the cash for one of those. Those are fantastic cars, but uh, overall, the G8s are fantastic. They look great, you know, but they haven't dated at all, I don't think. I mean, they, they still look fantastic. So, I'm going to be doing an owner's overview of that coming up soon. I'm also going to be releasing a video of when I did my fluid change on this. And what's actually funny is, I, at the end of that video, and when you watch it when it goes live... I said I was going to show you putting the oil in. I didn't do it because I got distracted by a major thunderstorm, which you see on the video. And uh, I didn't show that. But everybody knows how to put oil in their car. So just look out for that in the next video. I didn't, I didn't show putting the oil in. But I showed you where the rear drain plugs are in the differential, what you have to do to get to the rear differential fluid to change that, as well as what I did with my transmission and so on and the fluids I used. So that will be coming out probably this weekend after I get this video up. And then Good Guys Show will be filming that. That's going to be awesome. So there's some cool things coming up for you guys to watch. And it's super bright out here. I have little eyes anyway, so it probably looks like I have slits in my head right now because I'm just squinting like crazy. So, uh, alrighty, I'm going to try to not make this video 10 minutes long. And uh, so, yeah, uh, like my videos, uh, check out my channel and subscribe. Why not? Because it's free. Why not subscribe? And, uh, There'll be some cool content coming out, so I'm looking forward to that, and hopefully you guys are too. And uh, take it easy, everybody. Thanks for watching.